reefs are the most diverse habitats on Earth and are home to many fascinating creatures. Here you can find anything from the stunning reef octopus to the cryptic anemone shrimp. Reefs are home to thousands of species of fish and corals, yet only comprise a small percentage of the world's oceans. In the Caribbean Sea, the Belize Barrier Reef stands out among these majestic ecosystems. A part of the greater Mesoamerican reef system, it is considered a true biological treasure and is the largest barrier reef in the Western Hemisphere. Scientists at the Smithsonian's Caribo Key Field Station have been investigating the structure and function of this ecosystem for 40 years. Despite being one of the oldest ecosystems on the planet, reefs are incredibly fragile to human impacts. The Belize Barrier Reef faces an array of threats from urban development, overfishing and climate change. Fortunately, Belize has taken action to protect their reef, including the establishment of marine protected areas, or MPAs, in order to regulate human activities like fishing. By creating a mosaic of different areas that are off limits to human activities like fishing, it's possible that the positive impacts within the immediate areas spread beyond those borders and have broader impacts in the region. Governments like Belize aren't necessarily in a position to rapidly reverse global impacts coming from outside their borders, but they can regulate activities directly affecting their reefs. MPAs have positive ecological effects as well. Where fishing is regulated, increased fish populations can restore the natural interactions between corals and fish that have been weakened by over-harvesting. In Belize, a combination of new laws and MPAs should help restore herbivorous fish numbers to their natural levels. We need these fish on the reef because they act as a critical control mechanism for algae. Research has shown that without sufficient grazing on a reef, uh, algae outcompetes corals for space. Also, a healthy reef means a healthy economy. Marine protected areas serve to sustain local economies as well. The reef attracts most of Belize's tourists and also supports a vital commercial fishing industry. MPAs give commercial species such as lobster and grouper a refuge from the pressures of overfishing. The hope is that populations within a given reserve will spill out beyond that, those borders and sustain commercial fisheries and therefore uh, livelihoods in coastal regions. Belize's largest MPA is the Southwater Key Marine Reserve. Because the Smithsonian's Kariboki Field Station is located within this reserve, researchers saw a perfect opportunity to measure the effect that the MPA regulations have on the reef. A collaborative team of Smithsonian Research Associates are collecting data to monitor how coral and fish populations change inside and outside the reserve. Science plays a crucial role in MPA design and management. Enforcing a no-take zone such as the Southwater Key Marine Reserve without monitoring inside it uh, makes it impossible to determine whether or not it's having its desired consequences. Monitoring also gives managers the ability to adapt their strategy on the ground to changing conditions. Furthermore, MPA simply provide scientists an excellent opportunity to test questions in nature they wouldn't otherwise be able to. For example, we can look at the role of herbivory on spatial scales that smaller manipulative experiments just wouldn't allow. On a global scale, the knowledge gained from this research could help enhance our understanding of marine ecosystems and improve management of marine protected areas, which are exactly the type of far-reaching results that define Smithsonian science.